my name is Liana Holston. I'm a senior here at Stanford University, majoring in theater and performance studies and minoring in history of medicine. A bit about me, I am a tour guide here on campus. I'm also on the improv troupe, the Stanford Improvisers, or SIMPs for short. And I do a few shows every year as well. I'm currently writing my capstone project, which is an hour of storytelling called Things I Learned at Stanford. Today for me, wake up around 7.30 in the morning, have breakfast, do some homework, go for a run if it's not raining, um, have a meeting usually or do work on a project with friends, have lunch at my house, go to class in the afternoon, uh, have dinner at my house and then improv practice usually at night, followed by hanging out with friends and doing more homework and then bedtime. Okay, so where are we now? We are in front of Memorial Auditorium, which is it's our largest performance space on campus. Um, there's actually three theaters inside. So mm -hmm. the main one seats 1,700 people, which is where they do a lot of like new student orientation stuff, as well as big notable speakers come. Like Barack Obama was here a couple years ago for a cybersecurity nice. conference. Yeah. And then there's two other theaters in there as well. One is called Piggott, which is a little side theater next to Memod. And then mm -hmm. there's an upstairs one, which is where I auditioned for Stanford, actually, as a senior in high school which is very cool. And this used to be the home of the TAPS department, although it's been moved mostly across campus. Um, they had they have this new building called the Robley Arts Gym or Robley like, Theater, which is, um, it just underwent a $28 million renovation for theater spaces and dance rehearsal studios, which we're very stoked about. And it's a nice building now. It's so nice. Oh my gosh, it's really nice. Cool. It's like stupidly nice. So right now we are on the main stage of the Mem Out, right? Mem Out, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. I said that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what goes on here? This is where our big productions go up. So there's a student group called Ram's Head uh, Theatricals, which does the big musical every year. So they're currently doing Chicago right now, and that's what they're building the set for. Um, I was in Evita, the musical, my freshman year, which was on the main stage. And then this is again, like Barack Obama stood kind of like right there when he was here, which is cool. Um, and like Martin Luther King Jr. came and spoke on the stage in the 60s, which was pretty awesome. So like if ever they have really big name people, that's the most seats um, like in on campus. So that's why they bring them here. I see. So you've been involved in a lot of theater extracurricularly, but that is separate from your major. So the major itself is more academically focused and it's a bit more of a theoretical emphasis on theater rather than practical. And so it comes with a uh, history of theater classes as well as more in-depth dramaturgical analysis of plays rather than performances of them, although the TAPS department does put on a few shows every year. And then there are about, I want to say, 15 or so student theater groups, which are doing productions all the time. Uh, there's like four going on this weekend, which is bananas, um, but they're all over the place. And those will usually be in smaller spaces around campus. Some of them are in the theater next door or upstairs or in just kind of like random areas. I just saw a play in a bathroom two nights ago, wow. which was insane. <laughs> Was it a good bathroom? It, yes, um, that's an interesting question. And yeah, it, it was a good bathroom, I would say. Um, it was the men's restroom outside in the main quad and they were doing Marat Saad. Do you know the play? No, tell me about it. Okay, so its full name is, uh, here we go. Uh, the persecution and assassination of Jean-Paul Marat as performed by the inmates of the asylum of Charenton under the direction of the Marquis de Sade. <laughs> it is a play within a play and oh. Um, the, the premise is that these inmates of the asylum are putting on this performance that the Marquis de Sade has directed. Uh, and so they used a bathroom for it because their idea was the only space within the asylum available for a performance is a bathroom. And it's really, it's just cool that the university gives students the opportunity to kind of get really creative right. with what spaces they use. Oh cool. To get a degree in TAPS, what do you actually like have to do? There are a few core classes that you have to take. No, that's not even true. There's one core class that you have to take. It's called TAPS 1, and it's Introduction to Theater and Performance Studies. And that is the biggest like history of theater class. So they talk about a lot of Brecht and a lot of other you know theater artists throughout uh, the years. 
like Greek theater, Roman theater up through now. Um, and then when I declared a major, it was different. So they changed the major over the course of my time here and the requirements are now different and you can select specific tracks. So you can select either an acting track, a directing track, or I think a theater making, which is either like devising or playwriting. And I believe they're also thinking about adding on a technical side of the major track. Um, but for me, there are a few different fields. Um, I think it's like performance studies is one of them and maybe like theater practice and then electives. Um, so I really nailed it on the electives my freshman year. And then since then, a lot of those other classes are the more theoretical ones, which are like, I took a, um, a class called Rethinking the Ballerina, which was looking at ballet and the sort of the history of it because the TAPS department is where the dance department is also housed. So a lot of people who have a dance minor are technically TAPS minors. I see. And that's where those classes are offered too. Very cool. So, what is the academic culture at Stanford like? Hmm, um, it depends. It varies a lot from major to major, uh, especially because each major has a different number of units required to finish that major. So in order to graduate, you need 180 units in total. My theater major is 60 units, which means I have 120 other units that I get to take in my time at Stanford. Okay, so what can you fill those other units with? Um, <laughs> a lot of gen ed requirements, which are called the WAYS, which stands for Ways of Thinking, Ways of Doing, I think. Okay. Um, and they cover creative expression, social inquiry, scientific method and analysis, applied quantitative reasoning, sort of the broad like history math. So no matter what you're studying at Stanford, you have to take some math classes, some science classes. Yeah. The cool thing though is that they are so broad that there's a ton of different courses offered in each category. So each student can kind of find one that satisfies their interests while also like fulfilling that requirement. Right. And now you also have a minor in the history of medicine. Yeah. So how did you get into that? That was actually my sophomore year of high school. Uh, every student at a public school in Denver had to participate in something called National History Day. And I ended up doing a project about the history of of, um, plastic surgery, particularly during World War One, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And so when I came to Stanford, I took a couple classes and then I went to Oxford. I went abroad to Oxford my sophomore year and did my tutorial in history of medicine, specifically its advancements during wartime. And that's how I really solidified my interest. So in that case, you're actually in a really good place to make this comparison. Well, how would you say the like experiences you had in Oxford and Stanford are different? Oxford for me was way more academically intense just in that you met one-on-one -on -one with a tutor once a week and you defend your research paper to her or him, which is terrifying. Um, and my tutor made me read my papers out loud to him, which was like truly really the stuff of nightmares, but also a great learning experience. Right. Um, and so that was like the main focus for the quarter, which I knew going into it. Whereas at Stanford, my focuses are mainly like productions that I'm working on and seeing friends and then academics definitely factor in, but it's more of a balance of the three, whereas the academics sort of took more priority in Oxford. And would you say that at Stanford, it's like a competitive environment? You feel like, or no? The word that gets used here the most is chill, and it is very accurate. I mean, people really? are, yeah, it's a remarkably relaxed group of people, which I love a lot because I went to a high school that was pretty competitive academically, and we would compare test scores and kind of talk a lot about our grades and like the metrics of them. But here it's very much like a supportive environment. And the example that I use for that a lot is like, the reason I got this internship in New York was because a Stanford alum had had it before I did and she called me the night before my interview to do an hour of prep for it. And oh, that wow. was like, that is what got me the job, basically, beside my own merit and qualification. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but it's nice to see that like, Stanford students are really helping each other out yeah. wherever they can. It's a really nice environment to be, I mean, literally a great environment, but also just the academic environment is not um, like a, a stressful one to be a part of How in that fresh. sense. Yeah. yeah. What would you say has been the most surprising thing about your Stanford experience? I think uh, the thing that surprised me the most was the opportunities that they provide for students who are working in the arts to like find work in the arts over the summer. So um, my sophomore year, I interned for a place called the Public Theater in Manhattan through something called the Stanford Arts Institute. And they like give you the internship and provide funding for the summer, which covered my housing in New York City, which was super dope. Very cool. um, so that was like the most pleasant surprise mm -hmm. in my time here. And then, what advice would you give for students who are thinking about applying to Stanford, aren't sure if it's the right fit for them, mm. and maybe they can't even come visit? I would say the most important thing is take care of yourself during your senior year. Like senior fall is a very stressful time applications wise, and it's important to remember that like, 
Stanford and colleges like it are not necessarily the be all end all of education. Um, but if you are looking here, it's beautiful, obviously. And uh, it's important to know sort of what environment you want to be in, in your time in college. Like if you want an urban environment, Stanford is not that close to San Francisco. I mean, it's close, but it's not in the city. Right. Um, so that's why I love it here, because you do get the nature experience. Um, and I would say also just like pay attention to what you're thinking of studying and what department you're looking into and really do your research about you know the courses they offer and the requirements and then see if there are also student groups that match your interests as well. Thank you.